Hi, this is a quick video to show you how to set up Microsoft SQL Server for an installation of Web Experience Management 10.5. I'm using the document entitled uh, Planning and Installation Guide for WIM 10.5. And in that, in Chapter 11, there's a section on enabling uh, XA on Microsoft SQL Server. So after you install SQL Server 2012 or 2014, you'll need to go and enable XA. Uh, the reason is that WIM requires that uh, XA transactions be turned on to support rollbacks and roll forwards in the content creation and publishing process. Um, we'll also need to build a database uh, using a specific collation. Um, on page 130, it has instructions on enabling XA. We'll follow those. Uh, we'll uh, uh, find the appropriate DLLs and SQLs, copy those DLLs to the right place, and then run the SQL uh, to enable XA transactions. Um, we'll also need to go into Windows and turn on or make some changes to the properties in local DTC. Uh, we need to set a timeout property and enable XA transactions at the Microsoft uh, server level. Uh, we'll update this, the library DLL on SQL Server and it gives us instructions for doing that. And some additional um, information on copying uh, DLL files to the correct location and then running SQL scripts uh, to enable XA transactions. Um, after you do that, there is a nice script that will allow you to test that and make sure it worked. So we can go ahead and go to our server, for example. We're going to connect as the SA user, and then we'll run a new query. And I'll go ahead and run that. And when you get uh, these uh, rows, you should have 18 rows returned in that query. That verifies that uh, XA transactions have been enabled. After you've installed SQL Server and uh, validated that XA transactions are supported, then we can create a new database. It has instructions on page 117. You can use a script or do this manually. Um, so we will need to use a coalition a particular there are two collations supported Latin one general CSAS or SQL Latin one general CP1 CSAS um, so it doesn't matter which one you use we'll also turn on snapshot isolation and read committed snapshot to true and there is an additional SQL script we need to run to do some specific um, um, permissions or, or uh, resources in that uh, database So to create a new database, I open up Microsoft SQL Server Manager, and I select to create a new database. I'm going to call it WIM. I'm going to set the initial size to 200. I'm going to set the initial size of the logs to 50. I'm going to leave the auto growth and max size um, at their default values of 1 megabyte unlimited for the primary uh, table and then 10% uh, unlimited for the log. In the options, I'm going to set my uh, collation and that's going to be one of the two supported collations. I'm going to use the SQL collation. I'm going to use SQL Latin 1 general, uh, code page 1. Case sensitive AS. I'm going to set recovery model to full. I'm going to set containment to none and compatibility to SQL Server 2010. In the miscellaneous attributes, I'm going to set allow snapshot isolation to true. I'm going to allow read committed snapshot to true as well. I'm going to go ahead and save this as it is, and then I'm going to run a script to apply the other changes. So I'll do a new query, and I'm copying the script directly from the planning and installation guide. I'm going to change the, the database name, and this is going to apply some additional alters. Uh, set a uh, single user, allow set allow snapshot isolation, read committed 
and set multi-user and then I'm going to run that script. Once I've done that I'm going to create a new logon. I'll right click security and create a new logon and create a WIM user. I'm going to use SQL Server Authentication and set the password to the standard password we've been using. I'm going to deselect uh, Enforce Password Policy. I'm going to deselect Enforce Password Expiration. I'm going to set the default database to WIM. I'm going to leave the default language as it is. I'll go into Server Roles, User Mapping, and I'm going to set the default schema to WIM for the WIM database. I'm also going to make this user the DB owner of that database. And I'll go ahead and click OK. I'll also do the same steps for all of the delivery DBs I need to configure. So in this case I've created a delivery database with the same configuration and a delivery logon uh, that has the appropriate um, DB owner privileges on that database.